Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Roger Destruti. And today we're pleased to have not one but two guests with us from one of our very, very important programs, one of our very important departments, the Health and Human Services Department. And within that department, a number of very important programs, one being public health. So with us today is Tom Agerbrecht, our Health and Human Services Director, and Dale Hippensteel, our Public Health manager. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks, Thank Adam. You. Thanks, Adam. Nice now, to be here. we're going to have to tag team this a little bit between the two of them. And Tom's been here for three years and Dale for 12. So Dale's got the tenure, but Tom's the boss. So I, I think we'll, we'll really? try to balance this out pretty well. <laughs> and it's been a very good team. In fact, we have an excellent team at the Health and Human Services Department, a lot going on, a lot of programs and services. And Tom, if you could start by just giving our viewers a little flavor for the roles and responsibilities of your department. Sure. Nice to be here, first of all. Thank you, Adam. Um, yeah, our, our department, I think most people know, provides a, a wide variety of services. We've got 180 employees, and we operate out of three different work locations, starting with our job center, which is on Wilgus Road, a little bit west of Taylor Drive. And there our staff provide eligibility determination for Medicaid and food share assistance, and we provide employment and training programs. Go a little bit west of that to Sheboygan Falls, and on the north side of town, we operate an aging and disability resource center. So staff there provide information and assistance for individuals and families that are inquiring about long-term care. Um, we offer our senior meal program and coordinate volunteer driver assistance through the ADRC. Um, we also provide adult protective services and benefits counseling for folks who are struggling with social security information, things of that nature. Our main building is located downtown across from Fountain Park and there we offer behavioral health, outpatient services as well as case management, child protective services, juvenile justice, and as you mentioned, public health. And glad to have my partner Dale with me today. And for those watching this program and coming and going in the city of Sheboygan, some might get the appearance that a new additions going on at your <laughs> facility. Well, what's happening yeah, here? Yeah, someone asked me recently if our department was being torn down, and I said, no, it's just getting a facelift. So we've actually had a stucco facing on the east side of the building that has deteriorated over the years. So it's kind of acting as a sponge at this point. So that's all being resurfaced, and we'll have a kind of upgraded appearance to the building when it's all done. Yeah, we need to take care of our infrastructure too. So about 180 employees, mm -hmm. 30, 31 million dollar budget. Mm -hmm. It's our largest department budget, um, critically important programs and services for the neediest of the needy. And as you said, one of the areas, very important public health. And, and Dale, you've been our public health manager for a number of years now. I'm sure people are familiar with seeing your name from time to time in the newspaper. And Please tell us a little bit about your area and, and the core sure. services provided. Sure, I could spend a, a whole program on public health, so I'll try to keep this where it belongs. Um, in this day and age, we've seen a, a change in the public health services that are delivered uh, throughout the state and the country. There was a time where you'd come to public health and all you would think about are immunizations. You'd come in and, and, and get your chicken pox shots, and you'd come in and get your, your polio cubes uh, from the old days, those, those kinds of things. We still do a lot of those kinds of direct service activities. We do a great deal of communicable disease investigation. Uh, people would be quite surprised to see our list of diseases that are reported to us by the laboratories and the hospitals and clinicians, uh, doctor's offices in Sheboygan County that, that we have to follow up on. Uh, presently, we're in a, a uh, the state has a, a a very large number of pertussis cases, which is whooping cough, and we've experienced that here, we've experienced that in the schools. Uh, these are real life kinds of things that our, our people are involved in. We also do uh, our women's infants and children program and maternal child health, uh, ch childhood lead po uh, poisoning programs at, uh, in abatement, uh, identification, and so forth. Uh, one of the, one of the uh, mo more interesting programs that we do is the um, environmental health component, and that is the inspections and review and consultation of the restaurants, uh, the swimming pools, the spas, the hotels, the campgrounds, the summer camps, uh, public water supplies that are out in the country. Uh, kind of a little known uh, program. Uh, our restaurant owners uh, are, generally are very supportive of that, 
and our staff does a, a great job in helping those folks. And we're, we take the educational mode in that area. Uh, the, the other large component that we've really seen a change is we are into collaboration. We've, we finally learned in public health uh, uh, that we need partners, and we'll talk a little more later about some of the partners in the community health center. Uh, so, you know, again, I could go on about programs in public health, and I love it. Uh, great, great staff, and I, and I have to say that this county has been very supportive. I look at my friends in, in the eastern side of the, the state, and, and people are just struggling to keep services together because of cuts and budget cuts. So it's, it's really appreciated here. Well, what Roger and I appreciate is the excellent leadership that the two of you provide and the team you have in place. So we have so many hardworking, caring, dedicated people in public health and throughout the Health and Human Services Department. And for those of us from time to time who, you know, get into some of the detail and the critically important work that's done, it can be heart wrenching, gut wrenching work, sure. very, very important. And what I've particularly been pleased with with public health, Dale, and your role in leadership there is the collaboration with the schools and everyone else with emergency response planning if there is a disaster. I know you've been active in that area. And then as we're going to talk about in a few moments, the Lakeshore Clinic. So sure. we'll get back to you in a second. Tom, we've been feeling the pinch from the state for years. Counties, local units of government across the state, everybody's being asked to do more with less. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's a department in the county that hasn't streamlined or reduced their staffing or done what they could to be part of the solution. Uh, what's happened in health and human services over the years? Because you and I both know we have a smaller department today mm -hmm. than we did a few years ago. Absolutely, Adam. And uh, I think it starts with one of the key things that Dale commented on, collaboration. So as we look down the road and we understand that we're not going to have the same resources in the future that we might have today, um, it's pretty critical for us, I think, to try to integrate care. And what I mean by that is in the past, we may have been able to have three or four different individuals work with a family. The more we can prep and support an individual staff member to provide assistance, at least on a baseline level, we're going to be a little bit better off. So Dale and his staff have been great partners in terms of integrating care within the department. We've got a public health nurse that's now assigned on a part-time basis to the ADRC. We have another public health nurse that recently, this year, moved from uh, public health responsibilities into behavioral health responsibilities. So as a byproduct of that, we're able to reduce some expense. We're able to capture some new revenues. We're able to cross-train staff, and they can kind of learn from each other. And at the end of the day, I think we provide better service. Obviously, uh, health-related knowledge is a key ingredient in terms of aging and long-term care. So now the participation of that staff at our ADRC has been uh, very much welcome, very much appreciated, and that's a, a great, great model for us to continue pursuing. We've also, uh, I think, looked at vacancies quite critically. We've got supervisors now that have broader spans of control. We've got case managers that are carrying larger case loads, and kudos to them. So Dale talked about the quality of staff that we have, and uh, in all honesty, uh, w without them and their buy-in and their motivation and commitment, that wouldn't be possible. So a variety of approaches are helping us. And Health and Human Services, like many of our county departments, mandated programs that we mandated by the state that we need to administer. And as just part of the exercise of preparing for today, you know, we all kind of looked at our history a little bit, and it, it caught me off guard a little bit that literally the Health and Human Services Department has $15 million less coming into it today in, in 2012 than it did in 2007. Uh, predominantly state and federal funds, but mm -hmm. please touch on that a little bit. What's happened with, with the funding that you rely on, and of course, what has that meant for the programs mm -hmm. that those funds used to, used to help keep going? Yeah, you're right, Adam. I think the, uh, the delivery of service on the local level is undergoing major changes. Part of that is due to state and federal policy shifts. Part of that is also due to uh, erosion of state and federal funding that previously may have been directed our way. Um, as you mentioned, uh, as recently as 2007, our department budget 
was uh, nearly $47 million. For 2013, we're going to be under $29 million. So there's several, uh, you know, explanations for that. Uh, in the area of long-term care, counties had a role in terms of arranging and providing and coordinating care for vulnerable populations for many, many years. In 2008, the state went to a private managed care contract model that moved those dollars from county government to private entities. This year, we received funding reduction for income maintenance programs in our county along with nine others partnered to create a regional collaboration to try to hold those programs together. Next year, we're going to lose our W-2 funding from the state. That'll also go to a private regional uh, management entity. And the funds, state and federal funds that we were uh, using in the arena of children's long-term support services are now going to be managed through a new third-party entity. So we've seen significant erosion of those funds in our budget, and as that happens, it puts increasing pressure on local property taxes to, to hold baseline services together. Our contribution toward Corporation Council doesn't change. Our contribution toward building services doesn't change. Our contribution toward information services within the county doesn't change. But what does change is the share of state and federal funds that helped to support that previously are no longer available to us. So levy contribution has remained actually quite steadfast, has grown a little bit since 2007. I looked at that and I think we've seen about a 1% per year increase over that interval, but over the last four years, our levy contribution has decreased by about 1% each year. So, and, and when you say levy, the property tax. The property levy. tax, absolutely right. right. So again, as Dale mentioned, and I will reiterate it, the, the uh, support, the contribution, uh, the embrace from the county board and the taxpayers has been tremendous. So um, I know that the people in need of service appreciate that. We as a staff appreciate that. So very much. But as, you, as you're pointing out, change is inevitable. The state was in a situation, a world of hurt, needed to make some changes. Mm -hmm. Changes have occurred, mm -hmm. are occurring. We do see less state and federal funding. Mm -hmm. Just trying to hold the, the line on property taxes, and the county board's been very successful with that. Uh, departments have either had mm -hmm. the line held or seen modest decreases, as you said, in a time when there's demand for more services. So the viewers may be thinking, okay, that's all fine and good. We're hearing there's less money coming from the state and federal government. Uh, the county property taxpayers may be picking up the difference or the board struggling to hold the line. But what does this mean for the people we serve? What, what are you hearing from the people we traditionally serve that in the past may have relied on county mm -hmm. staffing or programs and now we're relying on other forms of assistance? How's that worked? Okay. Uh, it, it's funny. We, we annually, by statute, are required to have public hearings as part of our budget planning. And, and one of the comments that stood out for me this past summer as we were planning for 2013, we had a, an individual, I don't even know if he's a department consumer in all honesty, but he was aware of the fact that we're going to these regional models. Um, he understands that there's new service delivery mechanisms, and he urged us to, to try to resist that, to try to prevent that, because as he said it was so important for people to have local access and local voice. Um, this past Monday, I sat in on a listening session related to this new uh, state long-term care delivery program called Family Care. It was arranged for our legislators, and it was interesting for me because a number of the folks who showed up for that listening session were previous consumers of services through our department. And uh, their message was they, they mourned the loss of relationship with the staff members that they knew. Uh, they, they mourned the loss of quality of service that they felt that they had. And I think most importantly, they felt like their voice was no longer as, as heard as it may have been in the past because as services shift into private non-governmental entities, Access isn't the same, uh, responsiveness may not be the same, and one of the common uh, messages I heard was, we, we don't know who to go to with our concerns anymore. And I'm, I'm sure that will improve over time, but it, it, it made a big impression on me just how valuable the service that we have provided has been 
in the lives of so many people. Yeah. Nice to get that kind of feedback. Absolutely. Roger, I'm going to turn it over to you. Sure. Uh, as you know, earlier this year, the United Way and other community uh, contributors uh, uh, shared some exciting news about the uh, health care access to people that didn't have health insurance before or are uninsured completely. Uh, Dale, would you uh, please tell us uh, a few things about Lakeshore Community Health Care Center? Uh, that's a topic that's like public health. We could go a couple of meetings, but I'll, I'll try to focus for you. Um, yeah, we, we were awarded a, a new access point grant through uh, Health Resources Services Administration of the federal government. Um, and we'll talk in a couple of minutes about how that came about. What it, what it does is it allows us, and we're in our infancy, just starting, it allowed us to affect services for folks that are uninsured or underinsured. And that could be Medicaid, that could be people with large, large deductibles. Uh, a good example is, is the dental services we're now providing. Um, if we think about the shoreline, if you, there, there's an area all the way from Green Bay uh, down to Milwaukee where very few dentists uh, accept Medicaid as a payment source. So anyone that was on Medicaid or uninsured um, simply could not access a dentist unless they went, went out of town. And, and then it was still difficult. So, uh, so the, the clinic itself will be partially funded by the federal government, partially funded by, it's not a free clinic, as I, I iterate to, to folks, you know, you have to pay your copay, there's a sliding fee scale if you don't have insurance, uh, those kinds of things. It's not a, and it's meant to be a, a, a medical home for these folks. There will be dental services, there will be primary care services, in other words, your family practice, pediatric kinds of things, and there will be some behavioral health services all integrated in this, in this program. Thank you. Um, I was uh, pleased to be able to attend uh, the initial meeting with some of the background of the, the people who helped uh, collaborate and start the clinic. Uh, can you give us a little background on how some of the initiatives started and sure. who collaborated with us to make it happen? Sure. Yeah. That again. That's a that's a bit of a that's a six year story, and I'll I'll do it in one minute because I practiced this one. Uh, the United Way did a, a needs assess community needs assessment a number of years ago, trying to focus on. Uh, impact projects where they could put money where they could steer their resources to actually see change in the community. One of the things that popped right to the top was access to health care for folks that are that have no insurance or are underinsured. Um, and you know through that process, which was very it was gruesome almost because you really had to get people to agree on what they were doing. So uh, after that happened, both of our hospital systems stepped forward with St. Nick's and Aurora and uh, our medical systems and uh, United Way, they pulled their money. We were able to go out and write a, a fairly detailed grant for this new access point uh, program. And the first round we were not funded. This was two years ago. And then we found out this year, this summer we were funded. So we're really excited about it. We're, we're partnering with uh, Kenosha Community Health Center we're, we're seeing a lot of excitement within the community. Uh, so we have lots of partners. Interesting thing about the center is the board of directors, and it is nonprofit, the board of directors of the center has to be made up of a majority of people that use the clinic. Hmm. So that voice, as Tom talking about family care, that voice has to be heard. Can you give us uh, your perspective of the overall health of our community? Oh, sure. Uh, we, we are fortunate in Wisconsin that the University of Wisconsin uh, Medical School has a population health um, uh, program and they have rankings. And it's interesting that we are out of 72 counties, just overall health, we're about 18, okay? Now there's a number of factors that go into that that we won't talk about. Uh, we, we still see uh, access to care we still see this population that needs needs to. We can we can create insurance, but we still have to have access. When you, but just to clarify, 72 counties were ranked about 18. About 18. Is number one excellent, or is number one, one is excellent? Yes, is I'm excellent. sorry, okay. Adam. Okay. Yeah, very yeah. good. And that's that. So 18th out of 72. Yes. Which is so not too bad. Not too bad. We're okay. we're doing well. We we've seen a decrease in uh, teenage smoking. That's really good. Mm -hmm. We have not affected obesity and binge drinking too well. That's a, that's a tough one in this community. Uh, so we're, you know, the, the Healthy Sheboygan 2020 group 
uh, has a number of committees and, again, collaborations that, that are doing lots of programming. But to clarify that question you asked earlier, Mr. Chairman, you know, the need for the Lakeshore Clinic, you said underinsured individuals or folks that have no insurance. So when you look at the health of the community, though by and large, we're pretty healthy, room for improvement. Sure. But how many people in this community, how many people in this community have no insurance or are underinsured and are going to utilize that new Lakeshore we Clinic? as a godsend for them. You, you have nearly 18,000 people in this community that are, are on some sort of medical assistance program or are underinsured or have no insurance. Um, that's incredible. That's a lot of folks that's out of 112,000 people. Right, right. And uh, Dale, I understand Acuity uh, was uh, one of the uh, major donors to get us ramped up. Absolutely. In the and uh, they has, have offered $100,000 to help us this year. Can you explain about some of that funding sure. and how people can help toward that? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, last year they did provide us a, uh, a grant, a $100,000 grant to, to begin our nurse practitioner uh, mid-level program and we now have a nurse practitioner and uh, so that, that worked well. This year they threw a little, a little curve at us, a little zinger. And their foundation said, they, they thought about it and said, let's, let's challenge that community health center board. You know, they, they talk a pretty good story. Let's see what they can do. So they came back last month and, and said, yeah, we will, we will fund you in 2013 uh, through the foundation uh, up to $100,000, but only of which you can match. So theoretically, if we can raise $100,000 in addition to that, you double your money. Uh, so we have a pretty intensive, as Adam knows, a pretty intensive uh, uh, effort taking place, beginning to take place on, on obtaining new funds from individuals, from other foundations, from corporations, and I think people will, will step up when they, when they understand the need. Well, Deal, thank you for your leadership, and, uh, and the county board did provide a one-time uh, purchase of the dental equipment and it was a collaborative effort. Uh, is there any other information you would be able to give to some of our viewers? Sure. Um, the, the clinic phone number, and if you, obviously some people aren't gonna have a pencil in front of them, and they call my office at Public Health, just call the Health Department or Health and Human Services, we can provide you more information. The, uh, the clinic number, just to talk to people to get a dental uh, appointment or a medical appointment, that number is, uh, 783-6633, again, 783-6633, and and, or they can call our office and we certainly can help folks with that. On the acuity side, on the fundraising, uh, if people are interested in, in offering, uh, it, it could be $10, it could be $100, uh, whatever people were willing to, to uh, uh, part with, if you may, they could call the clinic at the same number, 783-6633, or they could call United Way at 458-3425 as this is a collaborative project. And we do, those are, those are tax deductible. Uh, we have forms that people can fill out. Uh, they, they would be available for folks to, to uh, uh, engage and, and get back to us. Well, thank you, Dale and Tom. Thank you. So a lot going on and we're, our time is pretty limited already here, but Tom, I'll turn it back to you for a couple of minutes. Any new initiatives? new initiatives in the Health and Human Services Department. Kind of in line with what Dale is addressing, Adam, uh, for, for state and federal governments, the same thing is true for us. Hospitalization, inpatient care is a huge cost driver for us. So um, that shows up in our department largely in the arena of behavioral health. So we have a number of things in place planned for the new year. Uh, number one, we're going to take a therapist position and redeploy it in the form of case management so that we can work more closely with persons who have been hospitalized, make certain that aftercare is being provided, make certain that it's working. We're going to expand psychiatric hours so that if folks are being hospitalized because they can't gain access to a psychiatrist or necessary medications, we're going to try to fix that. Uh, we're training our staff on new therapy approaches that have been proven through research to be effective in reducing rehospitalizations. This year, we've actually trained consumers to start supporting other consumers in the interest of providing a better safety net and aftercare. And in the new year, we're going to start deploying those consumers in that interest. 
Um, earlier this year, I participated on an ad hoc study committee related to our juvenile detention center. And um, I'm pleased to say we're going to continue to offer juvenile detention services in Sheboygan County. One of the things that, that came out through that study process is that we need to do a better job of getting treatment to kids as a component of that program. So in 2013, for the first time, we're going to introduce some mental health treatment as a component of juvenile detention. And then lastly, I'll mention too that sometimes we end up with kids in tough spots uh, who, uh, for, for whatever reasons, are in situations that don't allow them to be safe or to achieve permanency. So we're going to expand some legal services in the interest of trying to get those cases through the court process and promote better outcomes for those kids. So a lot of things in the hopper, Adam, a lot of things to keep us busy. Yeah, and what's encouraging is a lot of those new initiatives aren't as a result of new money. No. It's a result of excellent management and teamwork amongst your staff to streamline and establish priorities and, and make adjustments, and that's a real credit to you and your team. Again, it, it takes everyone on the team to make that happen, so I'm, I'm really fortunate to be uh, in the spot that I'm in and fortunate to have guys like Dale and the rest of our staff to assist with that. Yeah, well, fantastic. And, and if you want to learn more about the Health and Human Services Department, because trust me, we just touched on it. There are a number of very important program services helping a lot of people in great need here. And if you need more information or, or want to learn more, don't hesitate to contact either two of these individuals, either of these individuals, or contact the, the county clerk's office or the Health and Human Services Department, and we'll get you in the hands of uh, people who can help you. But on that note, I'd like to transition just briefly to another, and that is in government, we can't be all things to all people. The Health and Human Services Department, as we all know in this room, and you certainly know, we, we can't do it all. Government can't do it all. And that's why United Way and the new Lakeshore Clinic and collaborative efforts to help the neediest of the needy in this community are so critically important. Uh, as, as these gentlemen know, this year I have the honor of co-chairing the United Way campaign. And we have a, we have a, a goal of raising two and a half million dollars, about 2% more than last year. And we lost our county, our, our United Way executive, Bill Weissert, recently, which is a blow to all of us, the United Way family. But what's so wonderful about being part of this family is how many people step up and work together to help make good things happen and to help people in need. And when you hear about literally, not hundreds, but thousands of people that don't have any insurance, imagine having a toothache or your son or daughter having a toothache and not being able to go to the dentist to take care of that pain. People are in that situation. So if you have a chance, if you haven't participated or would like to learn more, and how you can help the clinic be successful. Give the United Way a call and, and we'll certainly I'll be glad to talk to you. If you're someone watching this and you have no insurance and you're suffering right now, you're in pain from a toothache or something like that, contact our new clinic. I mean, there's, there's a lot of demand right now, but certainly we'll do our best to see you as soon as we can. So on behalf of the four of us here in, in Sheboygan County, Thank you for your support toward the United Way, toward Sheboygan County government, and also a shout out to Acuity and their incredibly generous offer of another, another $100,000 to match to raise funds to ramp up this new clinic. So Absolutely. thank you, and thank you gentlemen for being here today. Tom Agerbrecht, Health and Human Services Director, Dale Hippenseal, Public Health Manager, and of course our fearless leader, Roger Distruti, <laughs> County Board Chairman. Chairman, next month we'll have our planning director here, Aaron Brault, and until then, happy holidays.